Welcome back to another episode of the Resellers Mindset Podcast. My name is Mike, also known as the Used Book Guy on YouTube, along with my friend and fellow full-time reseller, Johnny B. We help people start and grow their reselling businesses from the ground up. We also have a weekly Zoom call and private Discord for all YouTube members. Head on over to youtube.com backslash usedbookguy to join the channel and gain access to the full-length podcast, Zoom call, and private Discord today. Let's get into this week's episode. What is up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Resellers Mindset Podcast. Mike next to Johnny, as always, over on the YouTube or wherever you listen to this podcast. Today's topic is a kind of interesting one. Are new resellers doomed? And yes. It, <laughs> yes, <laughs> podcast is over. Yes, thank you for Shortest listening. Shortest one we ever did. There we, we go. It's a wrap. We appreciate you all. But there is two sides to this coin. Because nowadays, there's more information about reselling than there's ever been. Mm -hmm. But the problem that comes with all the information is just because it's information doesn't mean it's correct information. And I do believe, as somebody that you know has had a YouTube channel for a few years, that resellers, a lot of resellers paint a picture of reselling that is really not, it's not real. It's fake, right? It's like you never see the kind of behind the scenes nitty gritty it's usually just hey i sold this you know i sold this item for a thousand dollars right like it's like because that's how you get views on youtube but Slash. unfortunately a lot of resellers that's how they start reselling social media youtube so you get into it thinking hey i can go find a lamp that's going that i'm going to sell for a thousand dollars that i'm going to pay for three dollars and then you get out there and you're like this doesn't exist <laughs> what kind of witchcraft was this person doing like it paints a weird picture i don't know i'm curious what your thoughts are on this um as far as the informational side goes yeah it's plentiful there's a lot of groups out there including this one um you can get fast tracked by doing that but however i don't think it as it once was on any platform you go to minus the new ones because they're new looking at you whatnot and looking at you uh makari don't count those guys uh but for your amazon your ebay players uh the the game has changed quite a bit in my opinion um you got to work a lot harder the days of slinging anything and everything up in either platform i think are almost the door shut on that you got to be a little bit more particular and know what you're doing um and what i mean by that ultimately is you got to know your numbers. Uh, once upon a time, I don't think you needed to know your numbers as much, and you could just make money. Today, I think you need to make money because the marketplace, uh, on the traffic that's steered, the requirement, the gateway to entry, even on Amazon's gotten a little bit more higher. Getting the buy box takes forever these days. Um, being ungated and everything, that's not a thing anymore, so you got to pay up a bit. Uh, and there's a lot of other little uh, nuances to this uh, e on eBay. You got to sell a desirable item. You can't just sell whatever's in your pocket, including the lint these days. Um, you got to figure out what sells. So you got to do some research. To me, I think reselling as a whole, well, here, here's the key word. It's going to be a lot of work. And I don't think a lot of people are cut out to do a lot of work. I think about this. My, I'm happy with a $20 average sales price right on Amazon. Like, right, I basically... If I can average twenty dollars per sale, I take like ten, fifty, eleven dollars, um, on average of the twenty dollars that is profit before overhead cost, right? Buy cost, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And to some people, like that's, I mean, it's really, it's not exciting, right? I mean, there's really no YouTube videos out there where the most expensive thing they sold was a twenty dollar item, and if there is, they probably have little to no subscribers or views because that isn't the appeal of reselling it's like it's the huge items and you know i remember uh at the beginning of, of this year i asked everybody in the group hey what's what do you think my highest priced item was and people are like 500 a thousand dollars it was only like 160 170 dollar item and i think that threw a lot of people for a loop like wait a minute this isn't just selling all this high expensive type stuff with media it's just bread and butter items you continue to turn. You have to buy lots of it. And I do think, I wish there was this. I got a, I got an idea, right? You get a little badge on YouTube that says like reseller rarified, right? And they rarify your business that you're actually making money. And like, I don't know, maybe that's the stuff they only promote to like newer people because there's a lot of bad business that goes on out there in the reselling world. And you kind of, you know, you say core, like, 
groups, not courses, but although courses are kind of the same thing, they can fast track you. But with Amazon, dude, the problem is with new people, it's copy paste. It's just copy paste, right? Because the software is just numbers. You just plug it in numbers and software for Amazon. And for the most part, right? And then you just use your software to source items, whether that's online, or whether that's in thrift stores. So with Amazon, it's just a bunch of people that just copy and paste the same thing, the same thing, the same thing as new sellers. And that's probably the reason why most new sellers don't last on Amazon because you just copy and paste somebody else's business when we all know everybody's reselling business is different. I mean, starting from the ground up on Amazon, it was a lot of boxes I sent in before I started seeing some real coin out of that. It was a while. Um, a while for me. I mean, it was only like three months, right? But it was three months of eight, 10, 12 hour days of just shipping, 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 shipping. I already had the material. If I had to go out and get that material or that had material come in, it would have taken twice as long. So we're looking at about six months here, probably. Um, and then there would be hurdles to figure out where do I put all this stuff while I'm processing it? Um, I got I got to check for condition as well. So you got some processing there. Um, you got to decide what do I do with the junk? I had solutions to all of these. That's why it only took me three months because I was ready to go. I, or I played the Amazon game uh, a year before. So I already had the knowledge set to do it i mean there were some differences as far as fees and um the inventory restock limits because that had changed as well um but if i wouldn't have had that and i would have had to start from literal scratch and and i wouldn't have the knowledge it would probably take in six months and i'd be wondering the whole time am i wasting my time am i question mark i mean and that's the short end of the stick the amount of inventory you sent in since the beginning of this year is like it's insane i mean it's it's what was required from you and you got the job done but i'm here to tell you 99.9 percent .9 of people that were, were in your shoes would have been like nah this ain't worth it they would have called it quits after the first month because you ain't even getting paid in the first month even if even if you're sending eight boxes a day yeah i mean here i'll, I'll be a little bit more transparent than i normally am because let's see um so first month was September. Money made, $172. Woohoo, baby. $172, baby. There we go. Uh October, $1,900. All right. Now we're getting there. November, $3,900. December, $7,900. I made some changes between December and January. So again, $7,900 there. Following month, $10K, $10.3. But it took that amount of time and waiting to actually spiral up and i had an employee and i have overhead yeah yeah that's the, the, it took that amount of work i think is the big yeah. thing here and you yeah. know like you said you already have the inventory so the time it would take me to source you know you, you're you at like what ten thousand almost or over ten thousand on amazon yeah we're about to hit 11k and i took well we, we had some travel and some other projects too so i only did two weeks of work as far as amazon's concerned and shipments so I expect to be even a little under February, but in May here, it should be well over what we made in February. Just for reference, I just broke to 2000 mark on Amazon cherry picking. Like I could never, it would be impossible for me to have the numbers that he has cherry picking. I just don't have enough sources and enough time in my life basically is what it comes down to. But that's kind of why we work well together because two different completely business models, basically we can yeah. sell on the same platform. We can get the same results. It's just two different ways to do it. But I do think, if we carry over the copy and paste to eBay, I think it has become a little bit more prevalent, right? Like, you know, the big group out there, you got uh, tech and sports group, you got Chris's group. It's it's the processes and the self-accountability. But even when we talked to Mel, when we had Mel in the podcast, she said she's created so much of her own competition in Australia because she was given out exactly how to do it. So she has to think to herself, okay, well, where do I draw the line and what information I'm putting out there? And that's a 100% valid argument, right? If I, all of a sudden I have tons of re media you know, resellers in central Pennsylvania and they're getting all their information from me, it's like I'm almost destroying my own business in a sense. And I do think that copy paste has, has grown on eBay as well. People say, whoa. You know, Mel's selling books. I want to sell books. Tech sells clothing. I'm going to sell the same brands as Tech does. Tech, give me your brands. And Mel, what books sell well? And then all of a sudden, it just it destroys everything. 
No, and I learned a lot from Mel. She was there when I started, and then when I started to do books, I, I went looking for people who were selling books on eBay. She was the one I learned a lot of information from, and then I learned very quickly her business model and my business model, they don't jive. Uh, it works for her, does not work for me. And I, I tried the lots, I tried the bundles and all of that. I tried the coffee table books, didn't translate over here in the U.S. for my store. Um, and then I found my personal identity in the paperback books. And we were talking about this on the on the media call and text group just the other just this week. Don't copy anybody. Find find your thing and be original in your thing. Now, as far as the basics go, the basics don't change. Those apply to everybody. Like how do you make an eBay account? To how do you set up direct payments? How many photos should you do? Um, and even photos, you can have your own identity there. I do like 10 to 14 depending what it is and if it's special something i'll do the full monty of the 24 that it allows us to um but how you take the photos you can copy somebody like mel everybody has access to my story you can copy the way i do it but i recommend you find your own little flair and it's funny because um tech mentions uh, about an off white gray kind of background and how many photos are off gray white now because of that gentleman um, and I used a gray carpet early on. Uh, if you look at some of my older listings that are still up, you'll see that gray carpet because I, okay, the man said it, I'm going to do it. Here we go. The problem is, Johnny, I'm going to ask, oh, I am a new reseller. I'm going to start selling used clothes as of today. I'm going to message tech. I'm going to be like, yo, tech, give me a list of brands to look out for. I'm going to go to the flea markets like he does. And I guarantee you, I may, I'll maybe find five, 10 pieces and I'll probably be there for 10 hours. Yeah. I don't think people, especially new people realize the experience and knowledge base you build over time is how you win in this game. It's not saying, okay, well, I'm going to look for Polo, you know, Lululemon and just have this list of brands. And that's what works for you. No, there's styles. No, there's trends. There's this, it's that. And no, no matter what category this is, I know I'm saying clothing, same with sneakers, same with books. Same with music, same with DVDs. There's trends, there's understanding brands, publishers, right? I still don't know nowhere close as much as I should about books. Um, I'll, I'll be straight up. I'm more interested in knowing publishers of DVDs and CDs than I am books, right? Yeah. So yet again, it's one of those things where what interests you? What what, what kind of drives you? What kind of sparks your mind to think a little bit and make a mental note like, hey, I know, you know, legacy publishing or this small publishing house is going to be profitable. Now, switching switching over to amazon here i mean i'm gonna have to because i already see it in the market i'm gonna have to go beyond books to play the amazon game i am going to get into this media and i'm probably gonna try some vinyl and cassettes out to see how that does i know you've had success with cassettes as well i'm assuming some things will be in vinyl but that's a double-edged sword because now i'll have more stuff that i wouldn't be able to send in because i do a bulk model so I'm going to have to transform my bookstore to a media store is what's going to have to happen. Um, and that's going to be an interesting thing that I'll have to learn. Now, I know some things just be being in the game a while about CDs and DVDs and cassettes and vinyl and all that. But I'm not a master at it. I consider myself a somewhat knowledgeable in books. But even in books, I don't consider myself a master, quote unquote. That just requires time, just like in all of these things. So I'll be expanding my repertoire to continue to do bulk in Amazon. Because if I just stuck to books, I don't know how long that would be viable in the current fee increases we're seeing year over year. So I have to have more categories of things to send in in order to continue to do bulk. Or else I'll, I will be annoyed in three or four years where I can only send in a box a week instead of what I'm doing today, which is like four boxes a day. I want to continue to do that for the foreseeable future as long as Amazon allows me to. I want to make one thing clear. I don't expect a new seller to know everything today or to like jump in and be like the most super serious person. Like I think starting out, it's good to have fun. It's good to you spend a little bit of your your reselling money on things that maybe you wanted or you know whatever you know Domino's pizza treat yourself right because. I think it's important when you start, you can't be that serious. I don't think those people survive in this, right? If somebody comes in, it's like, I've never resold a day in my life. 
and I'm going to start today and I'm going to be the most super serious reseller there ever is. I think that person will fail more often than the person who's just like, hey, I'm going to sell a few things around the house, get a few extra money, maybe go to a thrift store here. Then they catch the bug and then all of a sudden they can build it into an actual business. No, I agree with that. Even when I when I first got into reselling, um, I didn't claim to be a serious person. I, people asked what I did before reselling because that's just a natural thing in groups like, who are you? I told him my background, like, hmm, why are you doing reselling? <gasps> because I needed a change in life. That's what I did. And uh, quality of life, actually. Um, and it, it was a quality of life. I lost a lot of weight. I feel actually rewarded in the work I'm doing. It's not the it's not the same old grind. It's a grind, don't get me wrong, but it's a different kind, and it's mine. It's a chosen grind. I chose the path I'm on. Um, What I miss, and I, I got to do it a couple weeks ago, actually. It was so much fun. I miss going into somebody's home and looking at their collection. That's so much fun for me. That is treasure hunting. It's either going to be crap and I'm going to sigh and do it anyway, or it's going to be, it's a wall of gold. It's all mine. Ha 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 ha. I miss kind of doing that because nowadays I hang out at the shop mainly. It's, it's a processing center. I'm not going to lie. We process and occasionally a customer walks in and I get their money and they walk out with books. Yay. Um, but I actually had a customer walk in. Hey, you want to come to the house and look at our books? I'm like, yes, when? Let's do this. I haven't done it in so long. Um, and he actually had a lot of good things. There's a lot of uh, repair manuals for both uh, planes and um, cars. And he was a doctor, a pharmacist. His dad was a doctor. So they had a lot of cool medical things. And then while I was there, he's like, we got more of these manual things at our air hangar. Like, what are you saying here? Do you want to come to the air hangar? Yes, I do. I've never been sourcing at an air hangar before. Let's do this. It was really cool. Uh, he didn't have as many things there, and they're all beat up mainly, but I pulled a few things, but I got to see some cool things. That's that's the fun part to me. Everybody else is going to have fun somehow, some way, but if you're the adventurer type, you can have adventures reselling. You think that's why a lot of people wind up giving up reselling? It's just because it loses the fun aspect of it because the fun part is like sourcing, right? Like for the most part, most people, the funnest part of reselling is sourcing the items. Um, and for me, I don't know, like sourcing isn't as fun as it used to be, but like I still have a decent time in my business. Right. But I, then again, I'm not in it 60 hours a week. I think yeah. I'd probably, I'd probably be a rotten old man if i worked in my business 60 hours a week look a lot grayer like me yeah so for me it's like it's fun right like i go out you know two days a week hit all my thrift stores send in a few boxes make a whole bunch of money like it, that's fun to me right it's like i don't maybe maybe i guess you're deaf i guess the fun equates to being able to have such refined processes that i don't have to do this around the clock i get free time off when i want free time off i kind of can do what i want i can have youtube i can enjoy the discord like reselling overall is fun to me i guess if i'm maybe if i was by myself and i never started youtube i never found you got around like-minded people then maybe i probably would have called it quits by now right because what's the fun like i guess like you need to share your wins and losses and the journey with someone for it to kind of be like fun to someone else especially since reselling is usually a one-person operation maybe yeah. if you have maybe it's like you and your girlfriend your wife your significant other your husband whoever it is i think that could kind of keep your your reselling flame alive but what happens here a lot of people it just that doesn't start to be fun and i think that comes from not making money right i think that's kind of the 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 root of no fun is when you're doing a whole bunch of work and you ain't making no money because that ain't fun. Just looking at that from the outside, you're like, wait a minute, this ain't fun no more because I'm not getting paid. It's interesting. Um, two years ago, um, in text media call, where they had some high level players come in. Uh, Jack was amongst them. And you all have heard of Jack. And uh, the gentleman spoke kind of mentioned the same thing I mentioned. He was success. He had like two story building team of like 20 people, a tractor trailer come in every week and leaving every week with the junk. And he mentioned the same thing. I miss the treasure hunting. I miss going out. But I know it's a waste of my time if I do that because he's making all the money. The systems are in place. Inventory comes to him. He's got the team. Everything's working. But he did say that. And I remember that. I thought he was crazy at the time. Like, why do you miss that? You're making so much money. But I get it now. I understand it. Do you think it kind of translates, though? Like, your fun when you start reselling doesn't have to be your fun throughout the whole time, right? Because I, I, I guess the fun for me is making 
making the money I do selling the junk I sell, right? Like that's fun to me. Like I laugh when I see somebody pays $30 for a used copy of Twister on DVD, right? I'm like, who in their mind is paying $30 for Twister on DVD used, right? So I guess that's the fun part for me. It's not so much sourcing, like sourcing's cool. And like, yeah, I like finding like <coughs> cool things when I come across and maybe rare things or things like for myself, a movie or a CD or something. But I don't know. The money's fun to me. I'm so I'm so greedy, dude. <laughs> That's why I'll never leave media because you can just turn a dollar into ten dollars infinitely. It's like a, it's like a cheat code. It's like investing on steroids. You just compound your money. And I guess that's the fun part to me. I'm just like, hey, some sucker is going to buy this. I'm going to put ten dollars in my pocket every single time. Like, I guess that is, it's laughable. And I guess it keeps it's me a in. license to print money. It's just how much money do you want to print? That means you got to work X amount. It's how much money do you want to make? And that and going back to the whole topic, is it survivable and doable this year in 2024? Yes, but you are gonna have to work for it. Yeah. You, that's that's the thing. I put in a lot of hours even on Amazon. I put a little bit of hours on eBay. Um and it used to be a lot of hours on eBay and a little bit of hours on Amazon. You can you can make it however you want. Um I, I think if you were to start today, you would need you need to make that call with yourself early on. Am I treating this as a hobby? Am I treating this as part-time income while working a full-time job? Or am I trying to make that to transition to full-time? And if it's that last one there, you need to realize you're going to have to work extra because everybody has the same advantages of you. They're, like we said early on, there's a lot more information out there today than there was, and the playing field has changed both on eBay and Amazon. It's a lot harder game, and you can't just sling up, I don't know, Teletubbies and uh, Beanie Babies anymore and get away with it. Nobody wants that stuff anymore. I'm looking at you, Princess Diana Purple Beanie Baby. Nobody wants you. I sold, I seen a sold comp for $3 trillion, dude. Uh, I know what I got. Price is firm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, money laundering there. I do think when you, if you're in that situation, right, because a lot of people are, and I was that person, I wanted to get out of CVS and resell full time. If you don't enjoy yourself during those times, you ain't going to enjoy yourself at all, right? Because those are the times where you're like, my life sucks. I hate this job. You should be willing to do whatever it takes to get out of that place. And there's going to have to be sacrifices made. You're going to have to be working 50 hours at your job and then 30 hours on the side in the reselling business to get it to a point where you can comfortably and smartly make the move to try reselling full time. And if you ain't got the hustle muscle, then you're dead in the water. If you ain't driving to the thrift store on your lunch break with a hot pocket and uh, one hand and coffee in your other, you ain't playing it right. If you're trying to make that transition, you yeah. got to figure it out. Um, it, if you work on your lunch break, maybe work on your dinner break, invite the wife along and pretend it's date night when you're actually secretly sourcing and see if she notices or not. Um, you, you got to have that hustle. It's got to be in you to transition out because if you don't, that one year plan turns into a 10 year plan. And the end of the 10 years, you may not have the energy and hustle anymore where if you put in that one year or that two years of hard dedication to figure it all out, get all your sourcing in line, maximize every m spare minute you can for your business and uh, your family. If you got a family and your real job. Or your full-time current job um so you can make your reselling life your real job if that's your goal you're gonna have to work for it work being the key word of the day here i i coach a lot of people behind the scenes um and most of them are usually newer people and i've seen i mean just in our group alone alone we've been doing this now for almost two years two full years of having the the discord the youtube group and we've seen so many people come and go. So many people we thought were going to make it didn't make it. And then there's always the few that like, you're like, this person's got no chance. And then all of a sudden, hey, they find something, something clicks in their business, something clicks with uh, with their mind. And all of a sudden, boom, they're pushing these crazy numbers, reselling. So there's a lot to be said about just doing the work and learning as you go. And sure, being around like-minded people will help. But create your own path. Don't don't try to be somebody you're not. Do something you enjoy. And listen, I think another problem here, Johnny, is I think there should be something like this where like 
if you're if your store doesn't sell anything over like a three month period. That, but they put like a big bankruptcy stamp on your account or something, right? Like, because a lot of people drag out this reselling business. Yeah. It's deader than the graveyard. And they just keep dragging it along, acting like, yeah, I'm a reseller. I just can't find nothing. I haven't listed anything in weeks and months. And it's like, I wish there was a certain way that we could just be like, boom, your selling account is turned off because you haven't sold anything in months. And maybe that would thin the herd because- Along with all the great information we were talking about, there's a lot of negativity in the reselling world because it's not an easy job. Not a lot of people are six figures successful in reselling, right? And those that are, you know, they they kind of show more of the flashier side and not really the work side. And what I see happens in January, we get an influx of new people at all groups. Doesn't matter what group you're in. And I and I play a little mental game. You're gonna make it, you're gonna make you're not gonna make it, you're totally screwed, you're you're wasting everybody's time. Oh, you're gonna make it, you're not gonna make it. Because you can see the people just making a January resolution versus people legitimately trying. And it's the people that do that new reviews resolution, they ain't gonna last more than two or three months, maybe not even after this call, especially if they ask Mr. Tech a question and then crushed. Love it. No offense, tech. I, I think that would be a good thing though, right? I think maybe after a month, everybody, you would have to release your results on whether everybody thought this person was going to make it or not, right? So after like a month of them being in the group, like your your destiny has been revealed by the group. How many people thought you were going to make it? How many people didn't think you were going to make it? But, you know, it's 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 tough to kind of judge a book by its cover. Um, I guess the thing with me is... If the questions are so basic and you're not willing, this is it. I figured it out, Johnny. Google? Yes, Google. If you're a new reseller and you're not willing to look up the most basic information on your own, like how to open an eBay account, how to open an Amazon account, what does the process look like? I don't think you're going to make it. Actually, I know you're not going to make it. No, you're not. You're dead in the water. Um you got to be self-motivated. Now, it's a difference if you Google something and you can't find it or you find you find it, but four people are saying four different answers. Which one is it? Then you can come to a group like this one and get clarification um, or text group or max group or any other group. That's what the groups are for. When you're getting conflicting information or there is no information out of it out there, but you got to put in the initial legwork first or else you're honestly, no offense to anybody who doesn't do this. You're wasting everybody's time. Stop wasting our time. Stop wasting Mike's time. Stop wasting my time. Stop wasting text time. Do a little Google research. Do a little YouTube research. You still can't find it, or there's 10 different answers. Then we're going to give you our time once you've done that, and we'll do so with a smile. But until you've done that, don't waste our time. <laughs> It's so funny, Johnny. People like ask me about something on Amazon, like, hey, how does this work? And I literally go to the Amazon search bar up top and I type in exactly that and it pops up instantly. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. But I will take I'll take blame in this. You know, I think all reseller reselling influencers have to take some responsibility because we've created a culture of reselling for everybody that's brand new feels like they can just be babied into a successful reselling business because all of the information's out there and because most resellers that are influencers have social media will respond to questions all the questions no matter how stupid we may think it is or how you know just idiotic the question is we'll still give a response so i think we are to blame i think we have created a reselling culture that's just okay i don't have to look myself Oh, Johnny's been doing this. I can just message Johnny and ask him if this book's worth it. And Johnny will give you a response. And I think that I think that hinders growth in the reselling basically profession overall. And I think that's I think why a lot of new sellers struggle is because they don't they don't understand that looking for yourself, you search research something yourself, right? If I'm if I have a question about this program on eBay, right? The international shipping program. How does it work? Do I ship straight to the customer? How does exactly does it work? Well, if I research it, you retain the information. It's kind of like people that write things down versus yes. just listening. But if I can just say, hey, Johnny, how does it work? And Johnny says, oh, it goes to a warehouse, then it goes to the customer. You're not retaining that information. It's just, it's just in one ear out the other. It's really funny. Um, and 
reseller greatness text group, we have a lot of information documented and we'll get asked. He does the Tuesday, ask me anything kind of thing. And there's so many answers. He's like, did you go to the document? Did you go to the document? The answer's there. Or how about the most referred call list? It's titled your exact question. Did you check that video out? And he's very polite and he doesn't really yell at people. Um, he tells them it's, it's there. We did the work for you right over there. Please take your time and go review that information. He does it in the most polite way. I give him all the commendations in the world for that. Cause if you did that to me, I would, I would go off on you. Well, at least yeah. the tenth time I would go off on you. But see the thing, even that is to a new reseller. Like you said, like even that is too much of a hurdle. Yeah. By by him saying, "Hey, go go look at this document we made," because they're gonna have to look at the document, read down the document, maybe scroll a few pages. God forbid. Oh, no. oh. Even that is too much of a hurdle. But that is unfortunately that is the reseller kind of the new reseller generation we have created. That it's just everything is just here. You go. Here's how you do it. Here's how you make 10k a month, 20k a month, 25 billions of dollars. And unfortunately, I. We've gone too far. I don't think we can back. Even step. you have like a hundred plus how to videos of how to do this entire thing. And just search the channel. Just use the search feature of the channel or go to the how to playlist. Watch every single, yes, every single video. Cause I had to do this. Mike's done this as well. Yeah. When we find somebody that's giving us good information, I guarantee you both him and I will go watch every single thing to pick up every single nugget of information. I've watched every single one of Mike's how-to videos because inevitably he'll say something that either I've forgotten about or, hey, I've never heard that before. That is a slam dunk piece of information. But, but the if barrier, I went to dude, Mike, nobody yeah. wants to do it. You're you're asking too much. Even as even to me, right, to me and you, we're like, who cares, right? You could just have yeah. a plane in the background. Exactly. Um, that's too much anymore because this is the culture we've created, Johnny. And now you're a part of it as being, you know, that's I mean, true. you're on the podcast now. So, I mean, you're, you're also a part of, but I think we do try to keep a realistic picture painted of what reselling is and the topics we cover, because I think, like I said, there's no going back now, right? Because every reseller wants to have a YouTube channel, every reseller YouTube channel in order to get views and make money on YouTube you got to be clickbaity. You got to find gold bars. You got to, you know, you got to, that's the way you win in YouTube world, but it just doesn't work good for the reselling community. And yeah, there's, there's plenty of YouTubers out there that kind of keep it real. And when it comes to the work that goes into it, but the vast majority, it's the complete opposite. And I can't blame them for it because this is the world we live in. People want the easy, get rich quick type schemes. And that's why a lot of people fall for these Here's Junk. what you do. Take your life savings down to Vegas, put it all on black, see what happens. Don't waste your time reselling if you want that life. That's my answer to you. I'm going to, to the slot machines, dude. At least the slot machines, I get a little bit of entertainment out. Eh, okay, fine. Your gambling device of choice. Put all your life savings on that. And when you come back from your time in Vegas crying and broke, well, you would have shortcutted the one to two years you wasted everybody's time, including your own, in reselling. Stop it. That's true. I, I do think there is still a lot of opportunity and growth within reselling, especially if you're new. I just think there's so much information out there now, everywhere you look, there's 50 million different business models that are going to make you trillions of dollars. Hell, I hear it all the time. Mike, why you still sell books? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And every year, Johnny, we always know there's a new hot and sexy business model that comes out. Um, especially with Amazon, right? eBay to Amazon, Amazon to Amazon, seasonal items on Amazon. Oh, Bro. Macari has no fees. Let's all go sell on Macari now. Yeah. Uh, that's the no fee thing is just BS. It doesn't work. It doesn't make sense. It's a marketing um, ploy. That's all it, it is. is. It is. Maybe I'll just, you know, I guess it's kind of like my marketing employee, you know, join the channel two ninety nine. It's cheaper than a happy meal. Right. So like, I guess everybody's got their own way of, of reeling people in. I just want new people to understand. Come to the store. You get a free book every day. I do it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all got a little gimmick in, in, in behind the scenes. But I think as a new person, you figure out what you're passionate about, what category you're passionate about, what platform you're passionate about. Because, you know, different different strokes for different folks, right? Platforms matter, right? What Just because everybody sells on eBay or Amazon doesn't mean you can't be successful, you know? Selling on Poshmark Live, selling jewelry on Poshmark Live. Like, there's so much right. out there, man. I mean, 
the choices are abundant. The pathway you go down, that's up to you and how you want to conduct your business. And then your business model within that path, that's also up to you. There are choices. You don't have to follow the way I do things, the way Mike does things, the way tech does things, um, the way Max does things. We have information for you based off our own personal experiences and what has worked for us. That's all we're really giving you. That's the that's the honest truth. Um, and we're successful in the ways we've chosen to be successful. Mike, he likes working 20 hours a week or 30 and doing the rest on his YouTube and helping Deb out. Good for him. Me, I'll work 80 hours in the shop every week and love doing that. And I'll come onto this podcast once a week um, or twice a week sometimes. It's just... I don't know. I'm kind of getting flustered now that we've gotten toward the end of this thing. I want people to do this and be successful. But if you're getting in your own way, don't waste anybody's time, especially your own. I think is, I think I'm just going to end my segment here and Mike, you can talk about whatever you want. That's all I wanted to say right there. Don't uh, we, waste your time or our time. Take it seriously. We, uh, we appreciate your Jerry Springle, Springle, Springer type final thought and i i agree with that you have to be willing to learn on your own and grow on your own being around like-minded people will help you understanding processes and maybe some tips and tricks from successful resellers 100 percent can help you i'm not knocking any group any kind of coaching any kind of courses there is something to be said for expediting your growth as a reseller kind of when we always get into you know cash or credit right you can expedite your growth if you leverage credit in the correct way it's the same way with information if you leverage your information in the right way you can grow faster you can you know have a, a bigger more successful reselling business in a shorter amount of time but there's also something to be said for the guy that's like hey i don't care what how mike does it how tech does it i'm just doing my way and if your way works then who cares with anybody else that's how i am that's why i don't that's why i don't change anything People, why why don't you go to the new software? Why don't you? My stuff's work. I use the same crappy software I've used for years, and it's like it's like maintenance. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why <laughs> why are you why are you trying to fix something that's working? Stop that, it. That's the problem, man. That and that's the trap you can fall in, especially as a new seller. There's so many bells and whistles, right? Just think about nowadays how many new sellers will start out cross listing on every platform, God. which never used to exist, right? That was never ever a thing, you know few years back now i guarantee you there's probably a high percentage of brand new resellers that are like i have to cross list on every platform because that's the only way you can win and that's crazy to hear and think about but that's the reality we have created unfortunately us you know us us resellers that are out there on youtube and social media we've created a bunch of little minions monsters little little orange banana looking guys banana right we've created reseller demons and now we have to deal with them but i think it is something to be said because some people that do have questions i understand some people are you know challenged when it comes to navigating technology and finding the right information because if you google a lot of this reselling stuff it's like you'll get an endless result of like scammy website especially with amazon oh my god Oh, don't yeah. don't Google how to do things on Amazon. You're going to get a bunch of sketchy websites, courses, all that nonsense. But hey, new resellers, get out there. 2024 can be your year. We're only four months through, right? Summer slowdown doesn't exist on Amazon. I'll put that out there, right? Uh, so don't don't worry about oh, summer's coming. This is the end. The sun is getting hotter. People's wallets are drying up. The money is made of liquid. It's not, it's not going to work. So we appreciate you listening and we'll talk to you in next week's episode. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Resellers Mindset Podcast. Today's full episode and all previous episodes are available to all YouTube members along with the weekly Zoom call and private Discord. Head on over to youtube.com backslash the used book guy and consider joining for as little as $2.99 a month.